In the sixth video of the series, we talked about how middlewares can be used to customize the application pipeline. Middlewares are a prominent feature in ASP.NET Core, and you'll see them referred to often. Another prominent feature in ASP.NET Core, and .NET in general, is dependency injection. The best way to understand dependency injection is by understanding the word. Dependency. Dependencies are objects that other objects can depend on. In ASP.NET Core, these are typically implemented as C-sharp classes and interfaces. Dependencies can also be referred to as services in some contexts, and that's because they are stored in what is known as the service container. Injection is the process by which a referenced dependency is resolved from the service container. This can happen either when a class is constructed or in the route handlers that we write in our user code. We'll see that in action by trying to implement our first service for our application. If we take a look at the code we've written here, we'll see that there's quite a bit of logic associated with manipulating our to-dos list. I wonder if we can factor that out into a common class that we can then reference via dependency injection in our application. In fact, we can. Let's try to do that now. To get started, I'm going to define an interface that represents the common functionality of our tasks service. So let's go ahead and implement that I task service. Great. This interface has some of the functionality that we discussed in video three. We can get to-dos by their ID or get the entire list of to-dos. We can delete to-dos by their ID and we can add a new to-do to the list. Now that we have our interface, we can create our first concrete implementation of that interface. I'm going to call this concrete implementation the in-memory task service. And that's because as we discussed earlier, all of the to-dos that we manipulate in our application server are managed in memory. We can see that we've implemented all of the methods that are required by our I task service interface. We're maintaining this locally in a to-dos list and we're adding, removing, and retrieving to-dos using the same logic that we had written in our route handlers. So now that we've defined an interface for our service and created our first concrete implementation, we can go ahead and register that service in our DI container or service container. This is where we're gonna go back to our web application builder that we discussed earlier in the series. Remember how I said we can customize the web application host by writing code in between lines four and six? Well, we're gonna do that now. We can register new services into our DI container by calling builder, accessing the services property on the builder, and invoking a method called add singleton. The singleton keyword here refers to the lifetime of the dependency that we're resolving. It means that it's going to be one service that exists for the lifetime of our application. Other lifetimes might create new instances of a dependency every time a request comes in, for example. But in this case, we want this to live for as long as our application server is running, so we will give it a singleton lifetime. We'll provide the name of the interface that is associated with our service. That's the I task service interface that we created earlier. And we'll give it the instance of our service that we want to create, which is the in-memory task service. Great. Now that we've implemented our service and registered it into our DI container, we can start to actually use it in our application. How do we do that? It's actually pretty easy. Remember how earlier we discussed that minimal APIs understands how to interpret parameters from the route pattern and from the request body? It also understands how to interpret parameters that should be resolved from the DI container. All I have to do to use an implementation of iTest service in my application is give it an iTask service parameter, like so. And then I can query the functions that are available in that parameter. So let's go ahead and call get to do's on the iTask service instance that we resolve from our DI container. Great. 
Now we're going to have to do the work to replace all of the implementations of this in our application. So let's go ahead and do this in our get to do's by ID endpoint. Swap out the application logic that we had written in line with a call to the implementation of get to do by ID that's implemented by the iTask service. We'll do the same for our post to do's endpoint. Swap that out. Add to do task. And last but not least, we'll do it to our remove endpoint. So we've replaced all of the logic that was in line with our handler to logic that is now centrally implemented in our in-memory task service implementation. One thing we want to do is validate that our application still behaves in the same ways that we expect. So let's run our application. We'll head over to our HTTP file and issue some requests. Let's send out a post request. We'll get the expected response, 201 created with the ID and the content that we expect. Let's retrieve all of the to-dos. There's the one that we just added. Let's go ahead and create another one just for good measure. Change the year here. Send it. We've got, there we go, we've got the response um, indicating that our request was successfully processed and a new to-do was created and inserted into the list. If we get all of the to-dos, we'll see that the list contains two. And let's check that to the delete endpoint works as we expect. All right, 204, no content. So things are successfully deleted um, from our list as well. Cool. So we've centralized all of the logic that is associated with our task management into a concrete implementation of iTask service. Now, this is a really robust capability. Let's imagine that in the future, we want to persist the items in our to-do to a database. Well, we can create a new concrete implementation of iTask service called in database task service and simply inject a different instance of our iTask service implementer, some sort of da in database task service, and our handlers will work just as expected. Except behind the scenes, instead of maintaining the data in memory, it'll be maintained via a database that our in-database task service supports implementing. We've now decoupled the logic that is associated with presenting our API and the logic that is associated with managing the data layer of our application, giving us lots of flexibility in how we write our code. So that's dependency injection with ASP.NET Core showcased in minimal APIs.